Hi friends, Sharon Thomas here with Established Footsteps Ministry. We are in week three of Ephesians 3 verses 14 through 21 in our Soul Pilates August study. And this prayer is just so profound, right? It's so deep. It's so life-giving as we just spend time in it day after day, day after day throughout the whole month. And I pray that you are really experiencing just new things with the Lord as you pray into these things that are listed here in this prayer. And I pray that you are seeing other people around you experience that as well. You know, we have a, a responsibility as people in the kingdom of God to really be light bearers of who Jesus is, to be life givers of who Jesus is. And this is such a tangible yet simple way that we can really not only let people know that we're praying for them and pray into this prayer for them, but we can also, you know, really help to encourage people to be in the word because as you share with people that you're praying for them, in Ephesians 3 verses 14 through 21, if somebody shared that with me and I didn't know what it said, I'd go look it up. And that's just getting more people into the Word in that way. It's amazing how many believers don't spend time in God's Word. And so even just you sharing with people that you're praying for them is going to send them in to the depths of what this uh, prayer is all about. So just so much, you know, a uh, trickle down effect can happen as we're praying for people, not to mention all the things that are beyond all that we could ask, imagine, or think that God will do as we pray this over people's lives. It's really been a joy to me to do that throughout the month and to let people know of that. And I appreciate the couple of people who have told me that they're praying it for me as well. So let's keep that going for the rest of the month. But this week we're really centered in on the first part of verse 17, 17a. It says, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Or some versions say, so that Christ may be at home in your hearts. And we've been talking about this idea of, of home. And what is home represent? And how does home Feel? And how do we think of home? And does Christ really feel at home in our hearts? And what do we need to do to make sure that he does feel at home? And what are some of the benefits of having him in our house, right? Our dwelling, our body, in our inner man. So, so much to consider and so much to think about. But I want to share with you a phrase that the Holy Spirit dropped into my heart this week as I have been doing the workouts myself and have been meditating praying into, pondering uh, these few words in verse 17 that are so powerful. This is what he said to me. He said, Sharon, when I am at home in your heart, then you will feel at home. And the more I thought about that, I thought, wow, Lord, you know, such a simple thing to say and yet so, so life impacting. When he is at home in my heart, then I will feel at home. I don't know about you, but I love being at home. I, I enjoy walking into my home. That has been the way I've been, whether or not I lived in a tiny little dorm room in college, which that was my home, or my first home that my husband and I shared. I remember even as a child, I just loved being at home. I loved getting into my room and, you know, I recharge kind of being in my space. And, and I love that feeling of being at home. I love the comfort that home brings. I love the security that home brings. I love that uh, sense of peace, of, of just being at home, being in my space. And you know, I, I hurt and I ache for people that really don't have a home and they don't have a safe place. There's been a couple times in my life where I've not felt like my home was my haven. And that, that's been a horrible place to be. But you know what, a lot of people live like that all the time on the inside. And maybe you're one of those people. I know there's times in my life where I'm anxious, where I'm fretful, where I don't feel at home in my own skin. And, and it's almost like you're running from yourself. I remember one time I heard Joyce Meyer uh, say, you know, I can't get away from me. Like, I have to be with me. And sometimes we try, right? That's why people get involved in all different kinds of, of addictive behaviors. It's because we're really trying to escape ourselves. And yet, Christ created us in that we would feel at peace and we would feel stable and secure within ourselves, within our own skin, in our home. I mean, our body is our home here. So that inner man, that inner part of us. And here's the thing. When Christ is at home in us, then we will feel at home. That's when we have the peace because he's the one that brings the peace. That's when we have the joy. That's when we have the security, the stability. We're not going to get it anywhere else. And we will not feel at home 
and, it, and we might even feel homeless, like we just can't get over or move beyond the anxiety or the different things in our life. When Christ is at home in us, then all is made well. Doesn't mean that everything tangibly gets fixed, but in our inner man, things settle down. And we walk into our space and we know that things feel right. We know that things are right because Christ is where he's supposed to be. Our home was designed, our, our being was designed for Christ to live on the inside of us. And when we, by faith, live with him in our homes, then we can be at home within ourselves. I want to encourage you to ponder that as you continue working out your soul in this uh, verse this week. And we'll be moving on to verses 18 uh, and 19 next week. We're doing all of this against the backdrop of verses 20 and 21. Now the him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond all that we could ask or think according to his power that works within us, right? To him be the glory. We're doing it all. We're praying into all of this against the backdrop of that. And so I hope that you're doing that as well. And just rem remembering that. This week I, I wrote down the passage on the card and I put it in my car actually. And every time I get in there, it just kind of gives me that boast of faith as I glance at that and I go, oh yeah, right, beyond what I could ask. You know, if maybe the day has started to move me into some places that are not so great for my heart, just, just re be reminded as I climb into my car that God is on the throne and that he's on the throne in me and that he's always working more than I could ask, imagine, or think. Such a rich, rich prayer. Don't let this month go by without digging in as deep as you can into it. I'll be in touch again soon. As always, if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, click that red button right below. Click like it uh, for this video as well if this has blessed you, and I look forward to being in touch with you again soon. See ya.